Taurus. Hello, Taurus. This is your forecast for May 2016. And you've probably heard the expression, once in a blue moon, right? Well, we're going to have a blue moon here under the full moon on the 21st. And what does that mean? Well, the definition of a blue moon is whenever we have two full moons in one calendar month, which doesn't happen all that often. So just by looking at having a couple of full moons in one month, well, we're going to be processing a whole lot more emotions and feelings and whatnot uh, here in May. And happy birthday to you, Taurus. It is your birthday month. And uh, we have a lot going on in your first house. The first house being your personality. We have the sun, we have the new moon, we got Mercury, we got Venus, your ruler, all here in this first house, which whenever we have Venus rising up towards our ascendance there, that's when we radiate all this beautiful Venetian energy. So women are that much more attractive and it doesn't stop there, you men too might just have a little bit more of that gentle sensuality here in May. Uh, having Venus, which is your ruler right now, empowers you, Taurus, to look at your values, what it is you want, what you don't want, but especially we're kind of focusing in on what it is you want as far as your goals. Uh, it could also be purchases. Venus loves to shop, get a good bargain, and so forth having the new moon here, well, that's when we always want to put down our intentions, but also to um, be able to write that abundance check to ourselves. And the new moon on the 6th of May is when you want to pay attention. It's only once a year. It comes into this area. So what should your intention be? Well, first house is about you. So whatever you feel is important to you right now, Taurus, that is where your intention is. Ask the universe to bring more of exactly that into your life and it will work. It's like seeding something that will have a full year to grow until this time next year. So Mars now having moved out of Scorpio, which has been opposing your sign for, for a longer period, well, being in Sagittarius is that much more fun. Sagittarians are all about adventure and joy and uh, having a great sense of humor, right? Happy-go-lucky. So this Mars now is going to want to reach for those things and uh, also perhaps travel and studies and so forth. However, though, it's showing up in your eighth house. Now, this has to do with resources that you, Taurus, have with your partner. What is fair? What is not fair? Uh, how should those scales balance a little bit more? You've been thinking about this ever since Mars has been cruising that seventh house. How you could get this to work? Well, here in May, you will come to see that it, it's going to put things on the table between you and your partner to get it, I'd like to say, down in writing, okay? Something that's tangible. Now, that retrograde here of Mars um, will be going back into your seventh house of partnership later on. But for now, as we start out the month, it's all good to get these things looked at, discussed, and brought to your attention or your partner's attention. Now, when we talk about shared resources, it's not just you and your partner. It could be you looking into mortgages or investments and so forth. Uh, maybe how you could do your taxes a little bit differently. For others of you, it could have something to do with inheritance or payoffs, uh, residuals of some sort. And when Mars is going to go retrograde, well, this is when we go back to Rethink, rewind, retweak. Oh, I got something <laughs> going on right here. Must be a hair. Anyway, so, but Mars is your drive. It is your ambition. So right now, that is the mainstream of your actions. Saturn is in this area. Saturn will want to help you make sure that you secure those things that are important to you. Saturn is still being retrograde. Uh, so the two of them working together side by side, uh, not by degree, but in the same area, one shores up the other. And uh, Saturn will make sure that you 
secure, anchor in karmically those things here, Taurus, that are important for you. Once every 28 years will uh, Saturn visit this area of your chart and it will be there for two, two and a half years and you're pretty much like halfway through the sign. So you have another year, uh, a little bit more than a year, uh, to work this area so that you can think long term, right? The long term goals. Retirement, retirement funds, where's your money going? How is it being secured? Those things is what Saturn in the long run here is working for and Mars now powering it up. So this should be a great time for you to get those things done. To Before we leave the 8th house, I want to mention that that blue moon, <laughs> that full moon on the 21st is also going to be in this area. So that would be around the time, that day prior, which is the 20th, 21st, 22nd, uh, pay attention to those days, what are, what's going on there, what communications you're having, what research you're, you're doing, because this is when everything is going to come up to the forefront. And uh, it could even be a little emotional too, okay, since it is the moon. But let's look at the start of the month and what you can expect now because the sun, which is you, it is sextiling Neptune, which is hopes and dreams and spirituality, creativity, uh, the arts, anything that's beautiful. Um, the sun and you are doing this dance and maybe spending some time with your friends could be a good thing to do here or a group here on the first because you are just very expressive, you're generous, you're feeling generosity is coming to you as well. And this is also because on the third, the sun and Jupiter are having a trine. And trines are always great. It is it, when things expand here now with Jupiter to you personally. So those of you having a birthday on the third, well, it's going to be a beautiful uh, birthday for you because Jupiter is going to bestow upon you something maybe you haven't expected. It's coming from the fifth house here. So that's from uh, a, a romantic partner, which the fifth house is all about. It could also be from one of your children where something is coming now together where you can feel it just so deep seated. But it could be you going out doing something really fun and adventurous. The fifth house is about going out and having fun. On the seventh, for those of you having a birthday, you will still feel that. Well, the sun and Pluto now doing a trine. That's transformation. But the Pluto here is in your ninth house. So this could be travel. So those of you traveling here on your birthday, fantastic time for inner transformation to get uh, in touch with that higher self of yours, some vision. Uh, I also feel if you're starting anything new on the 7th, it will have a long-term effect because it's going to be powered up by Pluto for the long run. On the 9th, this is a time for a date night. Uh, birthday uh, born here on the 9th will have a beautiful romantic candlelight type uh, environment. And even if you don't have a birthday, set up a date with your uh, significant other. And for those of you who are single, maybe you can come to meet somebody. Venus and Neptune, sextiling one another. Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, Venus being romance. Then Neptune coming in, which is that spiritual bonding between you and your partner. And so the two of you, you're on the same page, resonating to that same frequency. On the 10th, Venus again, your ruler. Love and romance is now doing the dance with Jupiter. Again, here is a surprise an opening, a gift, uh, it could be new beginnings, whatever new beginnings you do right now, well, this is going to have a long-term effect for you, one year to 12 years, uh, since Venus takes a year around the chart to get to that same point, and for uh, Jupiter to get the same point, it's 12 years. So, those of you getting married May 10th, my goodness, what a beautiful blessing to have with you here with this. On the 12th and the 13th, messages, pay attention to your email, your phone calls, whatever the deal is. It's news coming first from Pluto, which is transformation, new beginnings here, and rebirthing. And then on the 12th, 13th, Mercury and Venus also, uh, messages of love. 
and something that's emotionally transformative for you. Uh, plus Venus on the 13th will have a trine to Pluto. That's passion. Passion and desire. New relationships. For those of you who are newly wed, my goodness, what a, a honeymoon that the two of you will be having. So you can see from the 1st through 13th, it's all about love, values, money, gifts, celebrations, and so forth. What a beautiful half a month. Then we're going to have a little bit more of challenges back to reality, right? <laughs> so on the 22nd, the sun, which is you, is going to be opposing Mars. So you might want to still be in this honeymoon phase here of your life, even if you're not married. It's just that inner honeymoon of joy. But Mars is saying, you got to go do this, okay? So Mars is drive, and it's pointing towards a direction where you'd rather not go, but you might have to. So it feels more like a chore or an obligation. Your motor is a little hard to get back up and running after all this fun. On the 24th too, Venus is going to come to where the sun was on the 22nd. And it will be opposing Mars as well. And so now you're thinking, well, I really do have to get back to the drawing board, right? So those two days, just expect. It's just the planets doing their own thing. Uh, and you're going to feel a little bit fragmented, but you're good. You're good to go. But on the 26th, here comes a decision. Now this is uh, Jupiter in your 5th house and Saturn there in the 8th house, uh, squaring off on each other. So you might be looking over a contract or papers, having some communication, maybe some negotiation. If you're not too comfortable to yay anything, don't sign yet, uh, but then wait uh, to the 30th uh, when uh, Mercury and Pluto are coming together. There's just going to be a deeper understanding and clarity. However, though, Mercury is going to go retrograde uh, here um, till the 22nd. So you're out of that. You're good to sign. You're still in the shadow, but you, you should be okay at this point. So I'd say wait to the 30th if you have to sign anything. But as you can see though here, Taurus, it's a great month. You're very, uh, you always have great personality. You know, you're out there, right? You always radiate that Venetian energy. But this is a time right now where all of that is coming out. I see you interacting with your friends and groups and you're being charming. New people can come into your life as well. And uh, there is money because all of this is in your sign and you're good with those things, Taurus. But you might want to listen to what the Tarot has to say for you here this month. Since it's looking up good here, your cards should also uh, be excellent and also bring extra things into your attention. So this is what we have for you here in May. I'll see you again in June. Bye now.